Look, I'm absolutely overjoyed. I'm bubbling to have my next guest in the studio with me, Carl Tuttle. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Hey, nice to have you here. Hey, I just let's give people a bit of a background. Um, for people who are familiar with the Vineyard Churches, and of course started by, by the lovely John Wimber, and um, you were involved in worship writing and, and worship leading mm -hmm. with the Vineyard for, for too many years. Long yeah, time. Long time. There's a little yeah. bit of grey in your beard there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> So you're still you're still talking about worship. You're still playing that guitar. Uh, yeah, I, I don't play a lot. Um, there's you know these young people that are being raised up are phenomenal. So yeah. I'm more of a fill in from time to time. But uh, but I enjoy doing it, and I enjoy doing it with them. Sometimes I'll be leading worship with along with an 18 year old or something. It just yeah. it's really really a fun thing. Don Henley is still kind of filling in with the Eagles. <laughs> Mick Jagger is still <laughs> filling in with the Rolling Stones. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, that, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it still works. It yeah. still works. So you can still, if you're pretty crusty, you can still do the job. So you, you wrote a lot of songs. Like, um, I mean, one of my favorites was, uh, you didn't write Psalm 121, but you wrote a music, musical version of that. Is that right? I Lift My Eyes Up to the Hills? Is no, that, I didn't. Oh, you didn't write that <laughs> one? Yeah, you recorded it though, didn't you? I, yeah, I might have recorded it. Yeah. I recorded a Holy and Anointed one, and everybody thinks I wrote that, but it was written by John Barnett. But no, I, I did songs like Hosanna, yeah. All the Earth Shall Worship, I Give You All the Honor, Oh Lord Have Mercy, Open yeah. Your Eyes, songs like that. And that was a million years ago. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, iTunes are giving you credit for, for the one, Psalm 121. Yeah, just go for it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bank the check and be done with it. <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> but foundational songs in the vineyard. I mean, the vineyard at yeah. the time was, was known for worship, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't, we, we didn't know we were worshiping. We didn't know what we were doing. We just got together. We were kind of desperate hungry, broken yeah. people. And we just sang a bunch of little Jesus choruses. And and uh, eventually the Lord kind of met us there in my sister's house. And that thing just mushroomed into this worldwide thing. But we actually didn't know what was going on. We wouldn't have called it worship leading at the time, but that's, it, it evolved into that. And um, yeah, so I've been involved in that for, I think, I think that's like 39 years now. Wow. Just that part of it. Just that part of it. Yeah. So you were kind of saved into the vineyard in a sense. Uh, you know, John kind of presented the gospel to you about 1965 or something. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, and that was into the Friends Church. Okay. So I became a Christian and attended the Friends Church for about 11, 12 years. And that's where I met John, and, and John be mentored me really from 65 to 97. Wow. Yeah, so we had a long-term relationship. How important is that? Well, with him, it's it's an interesting. It would be defined differently with him than with others because with John, it was more than more as taught, more as caught than taught. Yes. So he just hung out with him. He yeah. just took me to run errands. He, you know, he let me lead his Bible study. You know, when I was a teenager, he he just threw you in the deep end of the pool. You know, well, I think that's part of John's genius is giving it away, getting it out of his hands and into other people's hands. And there are just dozens and dozens of men and women who would credit him with that. So how messy did it get in the early days when, when John kind of coined the phrase, come Holy Spirit, and, and, and the Spirit of God would turn up and people would start to experience the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? I mean, yeah. how, how great was it? How messy was it? Ah, how great was it? Um, well, it wasn't so great the first time it happened. Um, I, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I'm standing with my guitar and I'm just kind of lightly strumming. And, and the next thing you know, it was a war zone. You know, people were just down they were just crashing and burning you know what i mean uh under the spirit and and I, to tell you the truth it just scared me half to death i'm like holy moly and it actually disturbed john a little bit and and he spent some time you know up all night you know just again lord what is this and mm -hmm. and he got some guy called him at like five in the morning and said i don't know what you're going through but i just want you to know that it's the lord wow. so john just took that and you know, John was really good about, John just didn't stand back and watch this thing happen. He pastored it and he led people through it. And yes. That was a distinction between his model of ministry and some others. Yeah, and, and, and he led people to Jesus through it, didn't he? I mean, he, oh, said, yeah. he said, this is pointing to Jesus. And if it's oh, not yeah. pointing to Jesus, then we don't really want it. Yeah. So, which, yeah. Is, which is a great thing. And he thing. was willing to discern between somebody just acting out because they're maybe not mentally stable or, or because they're an exhibitionist or because they're you know what for one one reason or another or it was the lord and sometimes it's a mixture of all of it and that he he didn't mind having that tension he was amazing with that yeah because sometimes we have to get messy to find some of the real stuff don't we i would think so yeah i don't know how you get there i i don't know how you do ministry in the in the within the spirit uh and it not be messy and you've got a story about mess 
familiar. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the first time we went to, uh, well, the first large conference we did in England, London, England, in 1984, it was at Westminster, Westminster Central Hall. And uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, just remarkable. Um, but at one moment, there was just, we had just, the worship was just so peaceful and so quiet and so gentle. And we just were in the presence of the Lord and just being still and knowing it was God. And all of a sudden, man, this lady shrieked out like you, nothing you've ever heard. And I mean, it just almost made me melt right where I was at. It scared me half to death. And uh, because there was just no context for it, you know? Yeah. And, and of course, and I don't know what else happened after that. That's all I remember. I almost blacked out. Um, but, you know, we went on and did whatever we did, and John preached and ministered and all that good stuff. Well, I had always just, I'd never forgotten that. And about two years ago, I get a Facebook request. And uh, it's from this lady. And I said, yes. And uh, we had a couple of mutual friends. And so I said, yes. And the next thing you know, I get the big, long letter, how that was her. And she said, you won't remember me. And I'm like, I've never forgot yeah, you. That's, I, I'm indelibly scarred. Yeah, I have night terrors because of you. Uh, so, so she writes me this big, long letter, how she was sovereignly in that moment delivered. And in this last 27, 29 years, whatever it's been, um, she's led Bible studies, she leads worship, she's committed to the local church. It's just this wonderful testimony of you know, of God putting her life in order. And what people would have claimed is, is that was out of order. What she did was out of order. And yet in the upside down kingdom, in God's kingdom, he was putting in order that which was out of order. And I've, I just, and that's happened numerous times yeah. where things were happening that we didn't understand in the moment, but God knew exactly what he was doing. It's interesting because a, a mutual friend of ours, Greg Burson, who's a, who's a pastor and an itinerant, um, uh, teaches on the prophetic and very gifted man, he he used to say it's about the comma because that scripture says, let everything be done decently and in order. Yeah. And he says, it's about the comma. Let everything be done, comma, but decently and in an order. And it's yeah. kind of, let everything be done. Let, let God be God in, in a meeting. And, yeah. And, yeah. Hey, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you too was on, on your website, carltuttle.com, there is a, there's a, there's a piece of scripture that says this. But God does not take away life, but devises ways in which the banished person may return. That's from 2 Samuel 14, 14. It struck me when I read that because it seems to me that we have a community of faith believers who are out there and no longer connected. They are banished yeah. from the land. Tell, tell me about what, what we need to do to bring people back into fellowship. Uh, first of all, we need to realize our own condition. I think if we understand the, the, the darkness of our own souls, you know, how wicked and evil we all are left to ourselves, uh, and how generous God's grace has been in rescuing us, we, we, won't, we won't have an attitude towards anybody else of anything other than graciousness and kindness and mercy and compassion. But that verse to me really stood out when the Lord kind of lured me back, and I was out of ministry from 97 to 2006, and, and gladly so, uh, but the Lord kind of Jehovah sneaky, uh, <laughs> you know, drew me back into a church situation. One of the names of God, Jehovah yeah, it's sneaky. Yeah, it's one of the names in there in the Hebrew. Yeah. Um, uh, and and I just he in my view he sucked me back in and and I didn't realize it. And then I remembered this verse: uh, "As water is poured out on the ground and does not return, so we all must die." But God does not take away life, but he devises ways in which the banished person may return. And the ironic thing is God established this city as a banishment. Mm. And yet, at the very same time, he's, he's from, from day one figuring how to get you out of there. And there are. There are hundreds and thousands of men and women that are living in the cities of banishment because that's where they feel safe. Yes. Because they don't feel safe in the church any longer. Yeah, which is, and those yeah. of us that have been rescued need to become rescuers. And put our arms around these people and love them and embrace them in, in, in the same way that God does us, just as we are. And then let God do the transforming. It's his grace that teaches us to say no to ungodliness. Yeah, beautiful. So tell me, just tell me, as we, as we close, it sounds like a surf, doesn't it? As we close, <laughs> tell, tell me kind of in conclusion, you know, what, what are you carrying in your heart at the moment? What's the biggest passion that Carl Tuttle is carrying at the moment? Um, I think it's, it's, it's the fact that we're in process and the fact that we're on a long journey, and the fact that God will have his way uh, if we'll just get our hands off our owies and let him mm. get to our hearts. And so uh, I think it's uh, Ephesians three seventeen that he that we might know him in our inmost being. So that means our heart 
And so that means at every level, our intellect, um, our emotions, our appetites, our will, our, you know, our attitudes, that, that the love of Jesus would permeate every level of our heart, that there won't be any compartmentalization, there won't be any distinctions between who I am at work and who I am at church, that, that it will all be permeated by the love of Jesus that would be rooted and grounded in love by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that is a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming in. I know it's a busy schedule. We're heading back to the States literally now. Tonight. So man. I managed to snag you on the way through. So yeah. uh, lovely to see you. Carl Tuttle, Bless worship you. leader, uh, vineyard pastor, deep thinker, deep thinker. Mm. And uh, have a look at his website. And again, look up that Second Samuel fourteen fourteen. That is a treasured piece of scripture. This is Rima. I'm John Peachy. The time is seven and a half away from midday.